I'm recording it now. All right, so hi, I'm Lindsay. Um, I know a lot of you guys already just from Zoom, but um, so we're talking about personal care products today. Woo! It's gonna be a fun class. Um, and yeah, so Joyce is also teaching with me. She's like down here to me. <laughs> um, so yeah, she's all over probably. <laughs> um, <laughs> the purpose of this class tonight. So we are talking about what makes Young Living's personal care products so awesome. So raise your hand. If you buy any of the following products, and we might judge you if you don't raise your hand, so raise your hand. Um, do you buy toothpaste? Yes, good job. Mouthwash, shampoo, conditioner, yeah. <laughs> Lotion, sunscreen, yeah, yeah, okay, good. <laughs> um, makeup, bath bombs, face wash, moisturizer, all these things. That's what we're talking about tonight. It's stuff that everybody uses all the time. It's really important stuff. Um, so again, we're going to talk about why uh, young, young Living's personal care products are so awesome um, and the importance of choosing high quality and toxin-free uh, products. Super, super important. Um, and then we're going to talk about how to make the switch without breaking the bank. That is something that me personally, I'm super, super passionate about making things work in people's budget. So, um, so yeah, that's what we're talking about tonight. And thanks for joining us. And Joyce is going to talk about some dirty stuff. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> That doesn't sound right, but okay. Some dirty truths are, and of course we all know it matters what you put in or on your body. And I don't know if you knew this or not, but in Europe, there are approximately 1,300 ingredients that have been banned because they are harmful. Do you know how many are in, in the U.S. have been banned? Only 11. 11 have been banned. That's it. Um, and there's chemicals that are lurking in everything that you, you use fragrance and perfume. It's a broad category that hides hundreds of toxic chemicals behind the word itself. This is a major loophole in the FDA's federal law that allows manufacturers to include nearly any ingredient, even toxic ones, in their products under the names fragrance and actually listing the, without actually listing the chemical. So it could be a chemical and they're saying it's a fragrance, so very harmful for you. Other chemicals that can disrupt your disrupt your hormones, cause respiratory issues, um, neurological issues, skin issues. There's parabens, um, phthalates, DEA, mineral oil, sodium laurate, sulfate, di you know, dioxins, tri I can't even pronounce some of these words. All that stuff can be in your products and it is definitely not healthy for you. Some of the toxic, some the toxic chemicals are produced when combining other ingredients together. So by themselves, they may not be toxic, but when you mix them into something, they then become toxic. And they are, you know, in the products that you use every day, they're considered impurities and therefore, um, you know, they don't even have to be listed on the label. So it's kind of scary. So there are a couple apps um, that you can go on. One is um, the um, Think Dirty app or the EWE wg.org you can go on there and find out you know about all this kind of stuff so it's kind of scary to think that you're putting something on or in your body that you think is good for you until you read the label half the ingredients you can't read and it turns out they're actually toxic and not good for you um so now Lindsay is going to talk about why young living so um, what sets young living apart from any other company is that we have um this thing called the seed to seal promise. Uh, it's not a slogan. It's actually a promise and it's our um, kind of our accountability. So um, basically um, Young Living um, knows each plant um, when it is a seed to when it is sealed up in its packaging. So it's just, it blows my mind that like our company cares so much that like they care about the plant and how it's, um, how it's grown to then protect us from toxins that could have been on the plant and, you know, pesticides and stuff like that. So there's so, so much 
to talk about with seed to seal, I probably won't remember everything, but I mean, hand weeding, like there's no pesticides on the, uh, on the plants. We own, um, we own farms and we have partner farms with extremely high, um, high standards. Um, and, the, and our company is super, super transparent about that. When you're a member, you can visit the farms and um, you there and the distilleries. We own the distilleries. There's no, um, there's no secondhand distilling. I don't, I guess that's the correct way to say that. I don't know, but there's no, uh, what's, what's the phrase or what's, how do you say it, Hannah or Sophie or Peggy? Um, when it's not, redistilled over and over and over again to make the oil weaken. What's that called? We're not brokers of oils. Our right. company actually distills our own oils. Yeah. Other companies have to buy oils from someone else. Right. And we get the first distill, not the first not distillation. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Um, yeah. So it's, there's so much we could talk about. Um, and I forgot to mention that we have a chat feature too and I know Hannah's been chatting in there and filling in some stuff there's third party third party testing um so again super super high standards higher than organic standards which was kind of my thing at first when I um you know you can find organic essential oils but um our standards are higher than organic so that's pretty stinking impressive um and there's a whole there's a whole um, section in our website on Young Living about seed to seal if you want to look more into it. Um, but it, another thing is, um, well, the products that we're talking about tonight are personal care products are infused with essential oils. So um, it, you get all the goodness of the essential oils in your too. So it's fantastic. Um, also, Young Living is a one-stop shop. It's like the Walmart of the clean product world. That's like what we like to say. Um, I've, I've replaced so many of my products from Young Living and I don't go to Target as much. So <laughs> that's one way I uh, save in my budget. Um, and Essential Rewards, speaking of budget, um, uh, Central Rewards is our rewards program that monthly we get this customized box, whatever we want to put in it. Um, and Young Living gives us a uh, percent back in points to redeem as cash and free promos and cheaper shipping. And it's just so awesome. And I don't have to go anywhere to get these things. I get it delivered to my door. So it's super convenient. Um, and then also our um, our products are super concentrated, so you can stretch those, and um, we have some recipes for that, um, but a little bit goes a long way, so again, you're, you're saving money that way, um, so yeah, those are just some of the reasons why Young Living, why it's so awesome, um, but again, the oils are in the product, so even if you're not an oil lover, but you you shampoo your hair. You're getting so much good benefit from the oils that are in the shampoo. Um, so I could go on and on about that. But Joyce is going to start us off with some of our, um, we're going to talk about different types of products now. So she's going to talk about dental care. Oh, yeah. So Young Living offers dental care. It's um, uh, fluoride free. They have thieves whitening toothpaste. Um, right now I have the, I think it's the Aroma Bright toothpaste. Kid scent toothpaste, these mouthwash, these dental floss. I use all those, but the kids scent because I don't have a kid. And I actually asked my dentist about the toothpaste when I switched to it if they saw any issues. And they actually told me my teeth looked really, really good. They were really healthy. So I definitely would recommend the toothpaste. Um, and the mouthwash. Uh, when I first tried the mouthwash, I thought it was kind of strong, um, but a little goes a long way. And it just, I mean, I've noticed a difference in you know my dental care and everything else I just love it and again the dental floss because you know all dentists tell you you have to floss you're gonna floss you might as well floss with something that tastes good and is you know doesn't have all the toxic chemicals on it um that's what you know we have for our dental care so now Lindsay's going to talk about hair care yeah um and to the like what Joyce was saying about the mouthwash it is really strong and at first I was like whoa that's 
super strong. Um, but I love it on a sore throat, just like gargling it. It is literally amazing. And it's taken my sore throat away a couple of times. Um, so that's been amazing. So, um, and I recently saw a way that you can dilute that too. So it's a little bit less strong. Um, I think it's just like split in half and add water. Um, so yeah, I love the mouthwash. Um, okay, so hair care. I'm really excited about this one because I recently just switched my hair care. I um, was using up a product until I ran out and then I was gonna switch. So this is like my last switch and I'm super pumped because I love it. Um, so uh, we have uh, Copaiba or Copaiba vanilla shampoo um, and conditioner. And this is what I've been using. And um, honestly, I didn't love it at first. And it's taken me a couple tries to fall in love with this. And I finally love, love, love it. Um, because, um, so our shampoo is super concentrated, super, super concentrated. Um, I have a ton of hair, like a ton <laughs> of hair and it's curly. So curly hair is like a whole different world. Um, but yeah, this stuff is amazing. It smells really, really good. Um, and it's got Copaiba, which is one of my favorite oils in it. Um, and it's also, um, so anyway, the recipe, you can, you can dilute it. You can actually cut it by thirds and um, add water to it or pour some out, add water to it. That's one way to stretch it. But for me, actually, that didn't work so good. Um, and I can, like, for somebody that, like, I, ha I want my hair to feel clean and I can't do the no poo thing. I've, I haven't been successful with that where, like, you don't use the, like, I need suds in my hair. That was one thing I could not let go. Um, I just actually added um, liquid cast style soap to this and I, my life has changed forever. So it's, um, it's about half, half this, half cast style soap. If you want the recipe, I'll send it to you later. Um, but anyway, um, so that's just my, my recent personal testimony of this stuff. I love it. Um, and the conditioner is awesome. There's stuff you can make like a uh, conditioning spray, uh, leave-in conditioner with it. It's great. Um, but then we have other um, other types of um, shampoo and conditioner. We have a lavender volumizing one, and then we have a lavender mint daily shampoo. So um, I've, I've heard the Copaiba vanilla one is recommended for curly hair, um, so I really like it. But we also have kids shampoo. It's called the Kid Sense. That's our kids line. Um, and then we have men shampoo. Um, where did I put it? My husband uh, uses this. It's actually three in one men's wash. It's really, really great. Um, I can't remember what the, it's for hair, body, and face, I think. Yeah. Um, so good. It smells really good. The Shu Chan whole men's line is really great. They have beard oil, which again, my husband is super, super fond of that. And then an aftershave. Um, and then we also have Mira uh, hair oil. So Mira is kind of like a side line of, um, of products like hair product, um, after sh or shave gel and a face wash. Um, super, super good. Um, so yeah, those are for your hair. And then Joyce is going to talk body care. Okay, so they have a ton of different stuff for body care. So I'm going to start off with, they have a mineral sunscreen, which um, I love. I use that when I go out running. It smells so good. It, it's just, I don't know. It, it's not all sticky and gross and nasty. It goes on very good. They have the insect repellent, which I don't have a packet of those, but I have the little packets. And um, you can like use one small packet for like four people. Uh, my running group and I would use those too, and I've never had anything work as well as that stuff does. And again, no toxins, it's good for your body, and it smells good. It doesn't smell like that chemical stuff. Um, they have the uh, Mira Shave Oil in the Shoe Trans uh, Shave Cream. Now, I do use the Shoe Trans Shave Cream. I love to use that to shave my legs. I got it from my husband, you know, he has a beard, he doesn't shave, but that was my excuse to get it, and then I use it for myself. Um, I switched over to the deodorant um, a couple months ago, and I will never go back to anything else. It works so much better. Um, the, the scents are 
are so, they just smell so good. And I just don't feel like I'm putting chemicals, you know, under my armpits. Um, I use the bar soap and they have several different um, scents of the bar soap. Um, shower gel, I do have a couple of shower gels. Again, they have a ton of different, different shower gels. I don't know every scent or flavor or whatever you want to call it that they have, but I do use those. Those are very good. The rose ointment, I know um, my daughter Nicole has that and I know Lindsay has that. I haven't tried that yet, but I heard that's really, really good and they really like it. Body lotion, um, lavender and stress away bath bombs. They have so much body care. So they're, they have something for everyone. And again, you know, no chemicals, no toxins. They've got the essential oils in them. So they smell really, really good. You're just gonna just feel good using them. And it, it's, you know, it's just some good things to, if you do a, a, the switch, you know, ditch and switch, great products. So now Lindsay's going to talk about skincare. Yeah, so skincare, we actually just launched uh, last month a, um, a new skincare line for um, clearing and brightening, or I guess it's technically like brightening your skin. Um, it's called our Bloom Skincare System. It comes with um, a cleanser, a gel, and then a lotion, and it is dreamy. It is so, so nice. Um, and it's really, really helping with like spots on your skin, clearing up your complexion, um, brightening your face, all kinds of that kind of stuff. Super, super good. It's really nice. Um, and then we have charcoal bar soap, which totally sucks out a ton of toxins in your body. Um, and it's really, really good for you, especially like, uh, I don't know, this might be a little TMI, but like in the summer, you, you get a little bit more sweaty. So your back might break out with acne. That one is super, super good for acne um, on your body, that kind of thing. Um, and then we also have an acne treatment. Um, and that's really good as like a spot treatment for acne. Um, I really like that during the day, like in the morning, I would put that on. Um, and then at night I would put on like tea tree oil for acne and just kind of tag team it there. Um, then we have, we also have, um, uh, what's it called? The orange blossom, uh, skincare line too, um, which is, uh, geared towards acne. Um, that's really good. Um, and then our satin mint facial scrub. I've heard so many things. I haven't used that, but I've heard so many good things about that. So fresh and um, exfoliates really. Um, and then Sheer Lume. Um, that one is for brightening and firming your skin. It's really great. And our Bloom skincare line was actually based off of that product because that product was so popular. Everybody loves it. Um, so they came up with a whole skincare line based off of that. So amazing. Um, and then, so yeah, that's what I got for skincare. And then Joyce is going to talk about makeup. Okay. So makeup, um, I used their makeup before COVID, but now I don't go anywhere. So I don't <laughs> use a lot of it, but, um, they just came out with a liquid foundation, which I am pretty excited to use. And Hannah is showing her face off up there. So I'm assuming she must have put some foundation on. Um, what's really cool is they have a little um, tool that you can match to your skin to figure out what is the correct color foundation that you need to get. Mascara, um, I have an issue with my eyes, so I have to be careful with what mascara I use. I've never had any issues with their mascara. Um, they have bronzer, they have blush, um, eyeshadow, multitasker, primer, um, makeup remover wipes, which I love. Um, and like I said, I use their powder base, I use their blush, their eyeshadow, their mascara, um, and the makeup remover wipes do a really, yep, yeah, Lindsay's holding up, um, um, do a really good job getting it off, and again, it's all products that have no chemicals, no, you know, not, no toxins, and it's not makeup that feels heavy on your face, because I, I hate when you put makeup on, and it just feels like it's caked on, or heavy, and you know, and by the end of the day, you look like a hot mess because it's all wore off. I've never had any issue with their makeup doing that at all. Um, it gives you a nice refreshed looking, you know, a refreshed look. Um, and it, it's just great. So that's what they have for their makeup line. 
Um, those are the products that we talked about today. So does anybody have any questions or anything else they want to know or talk about? I do have to clear that up. My kid is upset with me because I said I don't buy kids scent toothpaste because I don't have kids. I don't have small children. She's a little upset with me. Just <laughs> um, I was going to add that um, the deodorant. So I've used natural deodorant, natural um, deodorant for a long time now because just researching um my mom had uh, breast cancer and there's a lot of research with that and um so anyway we switched to natural deodorant quite a quite a bit ago but i noticed that my skin my underarms would peel and get really red and kind of just have a bad reaction um to one of the ingredients even though it's natural it's definitely better for you it doesn't have aluminum which is the antiperspirant that's really bad for you um, but I had to switch deodorant like every couple months, switch brands completely because it was just tearing up my armpits and I have not had that problem with Young Living and I actually had to switch to Young Living because of that and it's just been a life, life changing. Like I don't have that problem anymore. My skin doesn't react bad. So. I found that their deodorant lasts longer than the other stuff too mm -hmm. and it smells good so mm -hmm. yeah the valor the valor one that's a newer one uh it smells so good <laughs> I, I just got that one so that would be my next one to try anybody else have any questions or anything they want to know anybody okay. i have a question wait Lindsay has a question because i'm good at just random she... questions yeah what? well you're you're welcome so we know Nicole does Young Living and she always gets me random stuff to try. And she got me this stuff for my hair. Yes. What is this supposed to do for my hair? It gets the frizzies out and makes it nice and shiny and I have it too. So after I like condition and whatever, like what while it's still directions? wet? Well, I don't know. I'm asking people I know. Read the directions. You can do it wet on wet hair and you can also do it on dry hair. So if you're like you, a lot of times you use a little bit less on your wet. So if you, if you want to condition it and I would just do the, what they call praying hands method, like down your hair like this, just put it in your palms. Um, but if I'm, um, I, cause my hair is curly and it also gets really frizzy and, and it's affected by humidity. I'll use it when it's dry and it really helps calm it down, tame down some of those frizzies. Um, and it just gives a really nice sheen to your hair without making it. Now, I mean, if you pour that whole bottle on your hair, your hair is going to look a little crazy. But if you just use that little bit and just, you know, that's this is what I do when I put it on like that. Okay. Yeah, I would avoid the top, like getting it too close to your scalp because it might maybe look a little bit oily. Just kind of focus like, like the bottom middle portion. Yeah. It really does a good job on the ends. Um, yeah. But I mean, I do come all the way up to here because a lot of times that's where the little baby hairs are or whatever. And, but, it, but she's right, you know, that you just kind of have to, if you, ha if you tend to have oily hair, you know, you, you take that in consideration, but mine's going to be thyroid problems and curly and summer humidity. And Lindsay, I would say we have pretty similar hair. I put mine on when my hair is dry because when I do put it on when my hair is wet, my hair tends to have that like, no matter how much I use, if I just use a little bit, it has that kind of wet, almost greasy look. Yeah, it looks great. If I put it on when it's dry, I can kind of just put a little bit and kind of put it where I need it. Um, okay. and it doesn't look greasy. So I put it on when mine's dry. Yeah, I no, only use it sense. on. I only use it on my dry hair too. I have the same issue that Hannah does. So if I get up and I'm in a rush and I didn't wash my hair that morning because I didn't feel like it, I'll just use some of that to get rid of the frizzies and just give it a nice style. Now, is there a Young Living product that we can use for her like curly hair? Well, they said they have the shampoo that's for Because, curly. I mean, I have like straight flat hair. My hair is just, I blow, like I air dry it and it dries straight. 
I and her hope I eat the vanilla shampoo, what I use, you could use on her hair. It's for drier textured hair, that and the conditioner. Yeah, because yeah, I would the Copaiba itself. Um, like, well, the oil is not a bad idea right. to use on your hair, but the Copaiba right. vanilla has it in it. I use the I use the Copaiba vanilla shampoo and conditioner. I only shampoo my hair about once a week. Um, and, and that actually is a change from using regular products. Cause when I use regular, you know, other products, I was like shampooing every day. And so then there was a period of time of changing over to natural that takes a little bit. Your hair might look a little strange right at first, or you might struggle. And as Lindsay was saying, I dilute my shampoo in half and it works so much better than full on concentrate because it is so concentrated. And I even, um, I will like pour it out on my head, which I used to pour it in my hand, but I pour it out on my head and then I'll start scrubbing right at the scalp. And then sometimes I'll like even get back under the water and that's when it'll really get really sudsy and then rinse it out. And then I use the conditioner and I usually use it straight. Some people dilute it as well. Um, I will at the very end when I'm trying to get the last dad, I'll put water in it, shake it up and then use it like that. But at the very, I get kind of weird, but at the very end, when I'm about to get out of the shower, I put about maybe a dime size of conditioner and I put three squirts of the Mira shave oil in my hand. And then I do the praying hands on my wet hair. And then I put it up. Do not use terry cloth. You don't use terry cloth on, on curls. Um, I use a microfiber wrap. And try not to twist and all that. And then I make up, I use the conditioner or our lotion with aloe and with a little bit of avocado oil and some rosemary and cedarwood for, um, I, I can tell you what that is, but I use that as a curl cream. And I did something today I haven't done. It's like when I, when it was full on wet in the shower, I just ran that through my hair and then wrapped my hair up and, and my, I'm getting my curls back. I'd almost lost them because of my thyroid issues. So I do weird stuff. <laughs> I've even made a gel from flax seeds. <laughs> um, so I have almost identical hair to hers. I mean, you can't tell because it's in a brain right now. And I do none of that. <laughs> <laughs> So, hers isn't quite uh, as coily as mine, but hers is very curly. Um, I use shampoo that I make, but you can use regular shampoo. I have used Copaiba vanilla shampoo, and I love it, but honestly, I forget to reorder it in time. <laughs> so I make my own shampoo, yeah. and I do an apple cider vinegar, and I use the Mira hair oil. Oh, I, forgot I, use, it. I use it wet. I forgot about the apple cider rinse. When I do wash, I, I use that. Yes, I use it wet. Um, if you, uh, if anybody else in here, curly haired girl by chance, anybody else? Okay. So, um, the bane of my existence is when I straighten my hair and I have like hairs that like go straight out of my head, you know, <laughs> you're like, why? <laughs> um, the mirror hair oil is really good for that. It weighs it down just enough. It doesn't make my hair look oily, but when it's, when it's dry and I've straightened it, I kind of will let it like cool off because you know it's so hot from the um, straightener uh, right before I leave I put a little bit of oil on my hair and just like run it uh, hands and run it through and it gets all those hairs sitting down like I want them to um, I was also going to tell you that in between shampooing if I do wash like I, I've been in the pool a lot and and the I have a salt system but it still makes my hair really dry so I'll just go instead of washing I just rinse it and then put conditioner on it and do the rest. Um, so between shampooing, I use conditioner. Okay, we got to answer Crystal's question about stinky boys and the deodorant. So what I would say, Crystal, is I consider myself a stinky person. Okay, so I'm stinky boys, Hannah, okay? So when I switched to natural deodorant, I went through oh, a pretty rough, it's rough. <laughs> detox period <laughs> where I was not this, I, I did not smell that great, but I used, uh, first of all, I did an armpit, armpit detox, which is like bentonite clay, apple cider vinegar. It's horrible, but you do it one time. I don't know if your boys would do that or you, you have one son, right? One son? Anyway. Um, I don't know if they do that. If they don't want to do that, I mean, you can just do like um, purification under your armpits while you're starting to adjust to it. But I did that and switched to the deodorant. And there was still that period where my body was adjusting because if you've been using, 
if you've been using the chemical stuff, you've been stopping all this stuff up, so your body's going to... I'm uh, sorry, I don't know how to... Whoop. Well, my, my dad's home. Clearly, my dad is home. <laughs> anyway, deodorant. It, it, I think it will work, but it's going to be a detox period. Anybody have anything to add to that, though? Well, my husband goes out this time of year, 90-something degree weather, humid in the south, and works in his garden and works outside a lot. And he doesn't smell good at all. <laughs> he's done with all that, and especially depending on what he's been eating. But um, our deodorant holds up. Now, he, the other formula, the newer formula works really well. The other formula was one that, you, that I feel like I even had to reapply. Um, so I will sometimes put it in my bag. But like Hannah's saying, if you're switching over to front to a natural, you're going to have a period of time <laughs> where you're not going to like yourself because of that. So that bentonite clay um, is, I've, I've heard it's a great way to detox. I didn't know about that. Um, but our natural deodorant holds up to my husband and my, uh, my Go ahead. I have a friend who just started using the Valor deodorant. She has not been using natural deodorant, whatever, and did not have a stinky period. So it's person by person, okay? Some of person us have to hold our armpit slit up like this while the mask dries. One thing I will say, Crystal, <laughs> and to anybody who has like husbands, boys, whatever, guys are used to more of a gel deodorant. And so this is not. This is a normal like chick deodorant stick, okay? Like it's normal for us. We have to remember for guys, there a lot of guys use like that gel, um, you know, type substance or whatever. So it's going to be a little bit different, going to feel a little bit dry. But um, my older brother switched over to it and he is one to give his honest opinion about it. And he actually likes it. So, and he does not, he has never left the teenage boy stage and he's 31. So <laughs> that's a good test. <laughs> I have a question about, um, my husband has a, he sweats a lot and he gets a rash in his armpits that are really bad. So he actually, we've tried everything. He actually will not wear deodorant now. Ew. He goes, I know he goes to shirt, goes to work with a couple of shirts and he washes in between. How are these deodorants as far as sensitive skin goes? Okay, so I have some thoughts on that. Everybody's going to go like this, right? Because it's so good. So just like Lindsay said, I used to break out as well in my armpits because I was like really sensitive and this does not. Two things. One, it might be that he is sensitive to the deodorant. I believe that that's probably what it is. So the switch over, he might still end up having a little bit of an irritation moment getting that stuff out of his system. But if he's not been using it for a while, he might have already detoxed the former you know, deodorant out of there. That's one. The second is we actually have a baby line and there is a diaper rash cream in that baby line that is actually really good for if you're like getting rubbed. So it might be that his sweat and all the like substance is just rubbing him raw. And that would be a good one to rub around, you know, so that he's not getting like irritation rub from like his shirts or, you know, things like that. Um, but the third thing is if he is still not wanting to do um, the deodorant route. We have an essential oil called purification. I think Hannah just mentioned it or um, Lindsay did. And it's a regular essential oil. This, use, this is what I used to use. This is my deodorant. You can put a roller bottle on top, you know, tip it over, use it. And then he's not using a typical deodorant. It's actually one of the most sensitive, like, things that he could use. And it, it smells good. And it actually forces him to detox because it's like a natural <laughs> detoxer. So those are kind of my thoughts on it. Does anybody else have anything to add? I, I was gonna. Oh, you got first. Um, we might be thinking the same thing. I bet we are. You can actually use oh, our thieves toothpaste as a deodorant. Oh, no, that's not what I was gonna say. And and it works. It's the strangest thing. There you go. What Lindsay has right there. You can uh, and and it may be the the key to him. It, there may be something in like the formulations, but I would definitely think. And I will say, my husband and I both use the same deodorant now. You know, before I had mine and he had his. And I was actually even talking to my youngest son today, and he was like, you know, those deodorants didn't work. And I'm like, well, you're used to using an antiperspirant, which means that you're, because he was like, I still sweat. And I'm like, well, we all still sweat, you know, but antiperspirants were actually doing that really bad part, which was preventing us from 
sweating, which is our natural body pathway to detox. Um, and so anyway, um, it also helps that you're eating clean and some other things. But when I was, when I switched to natural, I mean, I literally was clawing my armpits because they just itch so much, but I've never had that with Young Living. I've never had it with those products. But like Sophie said, um, purification's a great one to have. I keep it in my purse. It's kind of my backup deodorant sometimes. <laughs> and um, toothpaste, you might want to try our toothpaste. It's interesting. Um, what I was going to say is what I, cause I used to be really sensitive and like get like, cl like clogs and like c cystic acne almost. I don't know what you would call it. I learned I'm allergic to baking soda. Like I can't have bake and a lot of deodorants have baking soda in them as kind of one of the things that helps like, you know, deodorize. Mm -hmm. Um, our deodorants don't have that in it. So I don't have, I've never had any issues. Um, but it could be that he he's sensitive to baking soda. A lot of people apparently are. So, but. Um, sorry, one more thing, because yeah, I guess I didn't realize like deodorant. Like it is kind of a process to switch over. Um, and yeah, I I noticed um, over over. I guess I didn't notice overnight, but over a span of time, I don't sweat as much um, because my body has detoxed but also like the antiperspirant clogs your pores and it keeps you from sweating. Um, it's also very, very toxic. You have lymph nodes in your armpits. So that's super important to not put toxics in lymph nodes because that spreads all over. It's just not good. Um, but yeah, um, one thing I did used to do, I don't have to do this anymore, um, was kind of wipe down my armpits like midday and just kind of kind of clean it just with like a wet paper towel, just wipe them down and then reapply deodorant. And that helped me a lot when I was in that transition phase. Um, so yeah, that's just a little tip for smelling our, fresh. Our uh, seedlings baby wipes are great to have around for stuff like that. Yeah. Oh, there you go. Sophie just said that. <laughs> so passionate about deodorant. <laughs> It's an important thing to have. <laughs> Anybody else have any questions? Um, I wanted to add that sunscreen is a really important um, thing to get um, mineral mineral-based sunscreen. Sunscreen is one of the very first things I switched way before I started Young Living, um, kind of right there with my deodorant because sunscreen has a lot of really bad stuff in it. Um, and I learned about mineral sunscreen and the importance of using zinc oxide um, as your sunscreen instead of whatever chemical and it's just it's just really bad definitely look into it that website that joyce talked about the ewg it's called environmental working group um dot org um super super it has so much info on all that kind of stuff i would highly recommend looking into that they have an app too just like the think dirty website um or app um but yeah, sunscreen's a really, really big one to switch over to mineral-based. So we have um, the Young Living uh, Mineral Sunscreen. It's SPF 50, um, and it's water, water resistant up to 80 minutes. So that's um, pretty sinking good. And um, yeah, that's one, one of my other favorites. Does anybody have, oh, George sorry. George was mentioning the insect repellent, and I'm telling you that stuff is, it smells fantastic too, but um, I was out weeding this weekend and the sweat bees were just eating me alive. And um, I actually have mine in a little mister thing and I just sprayed it on and I was fine. Yeah, we've used it for our early morning runs and we used to get chewed alive and when I first got it I brought it and four of us used one of the little wipes and did I think we ran a gazillion miles that day I forget how many it was um but nothing and, and we were out there at three four o'clock in the morning running and you know everyone else you could see them swatting the bugs off them and we had no issues with it whatsoever so 
it's like you said, it smells good. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, Chelsea just asked what um, we dilute the sunscreen with um, because there are ways to stretch that, which I love. Um, and I just add fractionated coconut oil, which is the liquid kind of coconut oil um and add that to it and it makes um it stretches it longer it makes it a little bit thinner um a little bit um easier to rub into you can make it into a spray bottle by adding more or less i don't really i mean there's recipes we can send you um i don't really i'm not really a recipe girl so much anymore i just kind of <laughs> pour until i like the consistency but um but yeah that's uh that's really great too I did a post today in one of our groups where I had four of the sunscreen tubes and I had, I had squeezed them as much as I could, but I cut the end off and then I squeezed more out and then I cut it open and I dug out so much sunscreen and I put it in a jar and I was like mining for gold. <laughs> yeah. Oh, that's also, that's what I do with the toothpaste uh -huh. too. I do the same thing with the toothpaste. Um, yeah, after you can't squeeze out anymore, you can cut it, stick your toothbrush in, scoop it out. There's like at least a week's worth left at in least. there. So I just like put a put it in a Ziploc bag and leave it. It's so great. Mm -hmm. I actually sometimes will just fold it down and clamp it, you know, with like a, a chip clip or something and then just keep, keep using it. I um I do that with the acne treatment too because that comes in and when I got the acne treatment that's like one of my probably one of my favorite Young Living products because when I'll get like a random stubborn pimple I'll put that on there and like the next day or the next two days it's gone um but that's another one I'll clip it and it's a small bottle so when I first got it I was like oh, I'm gonna use this up in like a week no that lasts me like several months and then even still when you think that it's all gone you clip the clip the bottom off and there's still plenty down there. Mm -hmm. Does anybody else have any other questions or like a topic you're like wanting to switch over to? Um, or like a type of personal care product? All right, well. Oh. Go the ahead. orange blossom stuff you said that, or somebody said that that's good for like acne and breakouts mm -hmm. okay i see shaking heads a lot okay <laughs> well because yeah sorry we had to uh, cut off for a minute our dog got sick um so i normally use like stuff from lush and then we got we downloaded that was it thinking dirty app and we scanned all my stuff from lush and i was very upset uh, <laughs> about the numbers that came back. So normally like I had a whole little thing that I did with all my Lush products and it cleared up my face. Um, but then I stopped using that. And so now my face is breaking out again and I'm trying to find something oh, yeah. to do um, to help with that. So when I was in my, I think my mid thirties, I started having almost like middle school acne breakouts again. And I realized after a period of time, because my husband was convinced it was the cleanser I was using and I was using good stuff. It wasn't Lush, but it was another brand. And I, it, to prove him wrong, I stopped using it and overnight my face got better. So the <laughs> cleanser I was using was actually bothering. And from that point on till about, for about the next 15 years, I could not find anything that would really keep my face um, except for something that was antibacterial. And I was literally at one point using dial on my face because I just couldn't keep it down. So one of the things that kind of scared me the most when I, cause I, somebody that was an esthetician finally found me some products that got my face calmed down. So switching from those, because I started reading the ingredients when I started learning about toxins, all that stuff that Joyce talked about, um, I thought I, I was really afraid to switch to Young Living. And I switched and I started using the art line. I'm a little older, so I used that. And my face loved it better even than that other stuff. Um, I still will get breakouts every now and then, but I can guarantee you it's something I've eaten or it's like a hormonal you know, I, I'm, even though I'm not having a cycle anymore, I still have hormonal breakouts like anybody else. So um, just, I can't say enough. And the bloom, 
I think Hannah mentioned it in her chat. I mean, I was like, yes, I can, I cannot believe the difference in my pores from using Bloom. Um, and it's supposed to be for everyone, all skin types. Now, orange blossom is really more for the oily skin, the um, acne prone, the teenage skin a lot of times, uh, which, cause it's usually that type. Um, but in the art line was more for, and I, I just heard the other day what art stands for, for and I can't remember now, like something renewal. It's renewing technology. Okay. So it, it's for a little more mature skin. Um, but Bloom, I, I mean, I still love art, but the Bloom is amazing. I can't say enough about it. It's just amazing. Yeah, because yeah, like, I, I never like, had, oh, sorry. I no, never no, had, like, I never had like skin issues in like adolescence at all. It wasn't until I hit probably like 25 or 26 that my skin started to like, I would just break out all the time. And I was like, I don't understand. Like I didn't even wash my face when I was a teenager and I had like beautiful skin. And now it's like, I wash it and it makes it worse. Well, and sometimes I found one of the things I was doing is I was like chasing the problem and creating more of a problem. Like, uh, because I would, I would put makeup on to try to cover up that it looks so bad. And then I would just be almost clawing at my face by the time I get back and I'd wash my face. So I was like over washing. And the more you wash, the more your face has to produce the oils to replenish. Um, so just make sure that you're not overdoing, like you're not using astringents, for instance. Yeah. Um, toners are good, but astringents are not um, because they dry and all that. But it also, you might wanna consider that, that it could be something you're eating. Salad. And you also might wanna consider hormonal imbalance. Mm -hmm. That both of those, your diet, I mean, and I don't, I used to always think I was, it was chocolate, but it's really sugar. It, I, if I eat sugar, I will guarantee you it. I always say, you, be sure and know your sins will find you out. I will have a zit because <laughs> it will show up. Um, I'm so scary. I can have cocoa. I can make chocolate without sugar and I don't have breakouts. So it's not chocolate, but it could be dairy. It could be um, any of those allergens that are normal uh, for most people. It might not be your problem, but it could be also diet. Mm -hmm. um, I wanted to speak to Chelsea's question about um, bar soaps being, um, like she was wondering if that would dry out her skin. Um, there's the Mira face cleansing. Um, I, oil. I'm getting like, the name wrong. Yeah, it's a cleansing, it's an oil cleanser. Um, that is super, super moisturizing. I use that in the winter. Um, so that my skin's not overly dry because whatever my normal routine, like in the winter, I need more moisture. So I use that plus moisturizer, um, and that works really well and it smells amazing. Um, I like what Grace said about the orange blossom because that's the way my skin is too. Um, like I like the orange blossom because it will kill my acne but it will dry my skin out because I don't, that's kind of made for oily skin and I don't have oily skin. So if it's taking, then my body, like Peggy was saying, creates more oil and then I break out. So I actually really like Bloom because it's helped my skin kind of balance out its own pH, its own natural oils, which has made me not break out as much. But also I can definitely attest to the food thing because I have eaten a fair amount of gluten lately and I don't typically eat gluten and I have a nice little breakout right here on the side of my face that is like hello gluten so cutting out some of those allergen typical allergen foods you might notice it goes away and it might be sad but it's worth it mm -hmm. so does anyone else have any other questions if not we're gonna we're getting close to our Time, so I want to be respectful of you guys' this time. How does the foundation hold up? Um, All right, I got this one. Okay, so <laughs> <laughs> y'all, I went to one wedding on Saturday, like in the beginning of the month, July 4th, literally on a wedding, uh, a wedding on July 4th, and a wedding the following Saturday. I wore the foundation for the July 4th wedding, and there was no air conditioning at this July 4th wedding no air conditioning. And it was in the middle of ever loving North Carolina. <laughs> and then the following week I went to another wedding 
in Raleigh, it was air conditioned, but it was still hot as heck. Um, I obviously washed my face in between, so I'm not saying I wore it that whole week, the same <laughs> foundation. But at both weddings, I came home and like my makeup looked flawless, like at the end. And I'm talking, I was like drenched in sweat at the July 4th wedding and my makeup did not move. It did not run. It was still there. The same exact layer that I put on and everything. And I never noticed it. I didn't have that like, you know, oh, I'm like wiping sweat off and I like wiped off my face, you know, whatever. I never had that moment. So it stayed really well and it stayed for probably eight to 10 hours for both days. So I was like, kind of worried because a lot of my friends at the weddings knew that I was wearing the new foundation and so I was like all right you better hold up <laughs> and she did so I cannot recommend it enough it was amazing and no transferring no it did not it didn't I mean I, when I wiped it didn't transfer to my hand um, but I gave people hugs and it didn't do the whole like smear on their like shoulders and stuff and yes Hannah can attest to it because I stayed with her for the second wedding and I came in and she was like dang girl <laughs> like I know um I'm really great <laughs> we also have the dry minerals um that was the original mineral um savvy minerals makeup and we use a uh, misting spray with it so it goes on a little bit a little bit wet um but it isn't now we have the liquid as well. And so sometimes I like to put a little bit of the dry minerals on, uh, on top of the, the liquid foundation, especially in the summer, just to kind of set it. But the liquid foundation does really well on its own. Um, I love both actually. And I kind of am pulling one or the other out um, at different times. I've been trying the liquid a lot because it's new and I wanna to work with it um, and it works really well. Why do you have so many? She was talking about so I, I, I bought the entire, like they did like a bundle where you can buy all of it so I can do classes for people who want to like color match. So that's all of them. That's all of the liquid foundations, these bigger bottles, and then these smaller ones are the um, concealers. And apparently they're going to come out with more, um, more colors even. And I have that and I have all of the, I have all of the savvy. So I have all of the entire line. And I, I love makeup, but I also love having the classes, which we're not having much right now, but to let people color match. Um, concealer is to conceal zits and things like that, but it's also really good for under your eyes for like dark circles, um, things like that. And you can do, oops, you can do a concealer without foundation, but you cannot do foundation without concealer. Just and I'm going to tell you about the concealer um, because before I found Savvy several years ago, I, I'm, I'm aging and I'm getting the, the fine lines under my eyes. And I've always had dark circles under my eyes. I mean, you can look at my second grade picture from school and, you know, I wasn't wearing makeup then. But um, I stopped using under eye concealer because it actually highlighted the wrinkles. And so I stopped using it. This does not. And I almost was not going to be happy that they did this because I was like, liquid concealer doesn't work. It will get in those lines and, and highlight them. And this does not do it. I don't know why it doesn't but you're you just look smooth and flawless and it's amazing i mean it, i like it almost better than i like the liquid foundation just because it works i love it all right well, questions I, yeah if you guys have any more questions uh reach out to the person that invited you um, and yeah, thank you guys so much for coming and, um, we will see you guys in our next class, hopefully. <laughs> Bye. Bye.